What's up game? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Janine. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If this is your first time joining me, make sure you lock into my channel by clicking on that subscribe button and also by clicking on the notification bell. That way you don't miss an episode or anything that I do here. If you are a returning subscriber, I appreciate you so much for tuning back into my content. Today I'm going to be going over eight signs of a fake friend with you guys. So if you're interested in hearing more about those signs, make sure you stick around until the end of the video. Let's go ahead and hop into it. You can never make me feel envy. When I know deep down you feel empty. That's why you overcompensating. Your moves don't match what you be saying. I want to stay but you be playing. How many times I got to say? Now, I thought it was very important to go over signs of a fake friend today because I still see a lot of people glorifying fake relationships and I, I really can't take it anymore so I'm gonna go over these eight signs for you and if any of your friends exhibit any of these behaviors you need to cut them off immediately no conversation no talking about it just straight up ghosting and if you are the friend that's exhibiting these signs maybe you should kind of reevaluate yourself and make some changes that way you can keep real genuine friends in your life now i'm going to be going over these signs of a fake friend in no particular order so it doesn't mean one is greater than the other but we're going to start the countdown at number seven so the number seven sign of a fake friend is going to be competition. Do you have a friend that's constantly competing with you? Whether it be your hairstyle, your looks, your weight, physical fitness, jobs, where you live, your decor. I mean, anything, your boyfriend, other friends, trips you guys go on. I mean, the list goes on and on. But if you have a friend that is in constant competition with you, they are a fake friend friend and even worse than that nine times out of ten they're jealous and you never know where that jealousy could lead them what actions they could take against you to um basically win whatever this secret competition is between you guys so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and hop into our first story time for this video now to tell you guys a story i'm gonna take it back a little now i was at a friend's birthday party right at this birthday party, this friend had a guy come up to me and he had offered me a bottle and he asked me to drink with him. And I told him no. Now I'm about to cough right now because Adele was trying to interrupt my story time. So hold on. Anyway, so uh, I told the guy I wasn't interested in drinking any of his drink because he had a bottle of Patron. I'm more of a brown type of girl, so it was no hard feelings against him. Um, but anyway, he tried to get my attention the whole party didn't give him any and at the end of the party my friend whose birthday party it was walked up to me and says hey this guy wants to talk to you he got money all this and that you know what girls tell you when they want you to talk to a guy and um she said he wants you to meet him outside and I'm like oh no nah, I'm good I don't like a man who is not going to come approach me in front of everybody else if he wants to talk so you know, I'm good on that. I'm not going outside. So I guess she let him know I wasn't going outside and that was the end of that. I really don't know what she told the guy. Now, fast forward to a few days later, I have my best friend tell me that she met a guy in her apartment building and uh, he had invited her and whoever she wanted to invite out to the club with him for his birthday. Now, she said she declined the invitation. She wasn't going to go. And uh, that's really all I really heard uh, about the guy. Now, we were supposed to be going on a trip to Vegas together for my birthday, but she ended up telling me she didn't want to go to Vegas because of uh, the guy she was really seeing at the time, not the guy she met in the elevator, but the guy she was really seeing at the time wanted to go to Miami for his birthday. She said he invited me, which probably wasn't true. She just didn't want to pay for the Vegas trip. But uh, she said he invited me and, you know, they'll get my ticket, my Airbnb and all this other stuff. I'm like, okay, well, I'm still going to go to Vegas, you know, but I, I don't mind going for the first few days of my birthday trip with you guys and I'll just fly there. I just fly to Vegas from there. Um, so she was like, okay, that's cool. So um, the day before... Uh, the trip, she tells me that she's going to have the guy who she met in the elevator bring her to the airport. Now, again, we're going on a trip with another guy. But anyway, whatever people want to do, I just let them do it. So she was like, yeah, he was he was insisting on taking her to the airport. And um, she was like, you know, she's going to let him whatever. Right. So I was like, cool, because I didn't want to pick her up anyway, because she lived a little far. So I was like, that's cool. Um, and I get to the airport before her and I'm waiting around. Right. And uh she pulls up in the guy's truck and I had never seen this truck before, but she pulls up in the guy's truck and uh, she gets out with the guy. Now this is during COVID. So I have like a mask on, right? And uh, she gets out of the truck and then the guy hugs her. and He looks at me and he says, 
I know you. And I'm like, no, you don't. Uh, he was like, pull your mask down. I'm like, no. <laughs> like, what's up with the guy that you're bringing? What's up with him? She was like, what are you talking about? You don't know her. And he was like, yes, I do. And she, he asked me again to pull my mask down. So this time I pulled my mask down. He was like, I know you from so-and-so's birthday party. And I said, wait, you was the guy who was offering me shots and stuff? He was like, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, I remember you. I really wanted to say, oh, you were the guy who told me to come outside. But I didn't because, again, my, my friend pulled up with him. And um, he was like, yeah, I was on my best behavior that night, right? I'm like, I don't know, whatever. Um, and you know, they parted ways and we go into the airport together and I tell my home girl that he tried to get at me first. Right. And I'm like, girl, I wouldn't be surprised if he knew I was your friend. Right. Cause why else would he want to bring you to the airport? She's like, no, nah, he didn't know. Now me and her are all over her Instagram. Right. Period. We all over her Instagram. We tag each other and everything. Like, so this guy knows that we are friends. Right. But people don't like to to shatter their ego right the image that they have of themselves which is so big would not allow them to believe that a person will literally come into their life to meet me but my ego is fine so i, I do believe this right now normally when when me and her have a guy in common we both just won't date the guy we both just will leave the guy alone because he likes the other one as well and nine times out of ten it's always somebody likes me first and then she meets them and then they try to get at her or, you know, she is dating somebody or talks to somebody. Then they see me. Then they want to date me instead. Um, so we just always just, you know, be like, you know, we're not going to date the guy. We're just going to leave the guy for the streets. So this particular guy, she says, well, he got money. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this guy or whatever like that. I was like, okay, well, cool with me. I don't care. She's like, girl, you, you missed your blessing. You should have talked to him that night or whatever. I'm like, girl, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care for real, right? But she, keep trying to, she keeps trying to harp to me like I'm missing out on something with this guy, right? Um, so again, we're on a trip with another guy, period. We're on a trip with another guy. Um, then we go to Miami, right? In Miami, we meet up with one of my other friends who tells us that she also knows this guy because he used to date one of our other friends, right? And, um, she says that the guy did something to her to super offend her and like, he's not a good guy and all this other stuff, right? So my homegirl asked me, like, what do you think I should do? I said, well, it's up to you. You know, it's your decision. You decide who you date. You decide who you give a chance to. It's not for me to decide. So it depends on what you believe. So it's up to you. And uh, she decides to take the guy seriously, right? Now, I personally believe she took this guy seriously so he would not date me because any person with eyes can tell he was interested in me. I don't know a man I have dated that would know one of my friends who dated them or whatever, talked to them or tried to get at them or anything that would address them in front of me. They would always make sure they act like they don't know the girl, right? Period. They're not trying to ruin anything with me. So I thought it was odd that the guy went above and beyond to get me to show my face and to say that he knows me during the interaction when he dropped her off at the airport so i think she peeped it as well which is the reason she decided to pursue something with him and lo and behold you know of course the relationship didn't work out but i want to tell you guys a few things during the relationship that told me she was in competition with me now um during this relationship the guy would constantly invite me out with her like he always be like invite janique invite janique invite janique and this particular time i could hear the conversation so i'm at her house and i hear him on the phone say oh is janique over there janique dress and stuff like that now if your man is constantly asking about me is he really your man like i'm confused like my man would never ever bring up another girl so this particular time he's like oh janique over there janique dress like oh tell janique like to come out to dinner with us like we can hang out and stuff like that and she's like okay i'm gonna tell her she comes out the room fully dressed and tells me okay girl i'm, I'm gonna leave you here i'll be back i'm gonna go to dinner with so-and-so and i'm like i literally just heard him invite me i don't care that you don't want me to come but you can at least act like he said something to you about inviting me right but you telling me that you don't want me to come or you acting like let me say ignoring the invitation tells me that there's some secret jealousy there's some secret competition that you in with me to try to prove to me that this is the guy for you and you're the one for him so do you know like she kind of like mourning or whatever so um after they go to dinner she invites me over to his house with them and I go, you know, because I'm, I'm I'm nosy. I go over there and uh, the whole time she's going above and beyond to act like they're so in love and all this other stuff. But the guy is staring at me the whole night. Like, I would never embarrass myself like that. But at the same time, I did not want to believe that my friend would get in a relationship with a guy just to make sure that I don't have him. It was sad and they ended up being in a super toxic relationship and wasting like six months of their time with each other when they both did it for me. 
he tried to get at her and he and he revealed this to me so I, this is not hearsay he revealed this to me when he met her in the elevator he knew she was my friend he had looked me up on instagram after the party so he already knew who i was okay he knew this was my friend and he knew she lived in my building because he saw me posting in the building he saw me posting in the building and he decides to pursue a relationship with her because he's upset that i did not give him a chance right and she put herself through that because she tried to date him because she did not want me to have him so that competition led them to wasting each other's time, energy, and space, and, and and only to have him circle back around after they break up and ask me for a chance. Now, that was sad to me, but it tells you how people will compete with you for a relationship. People want to prove so bad that they're the prize. I don't have to prove anything to anybody because at the end of the day, I'm in my own lane, I'm in my own race, and I will never compete with a friend for a man, period, point blank. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So um, she tried to show him that she was a better candidate and she wasn't. He tried to come back around and get me. Of course, I'm not interested. But, you know, I did enjoy hearing him tell me how she constantly told him how I was jealous of her, how she constantly told him I was jealous of their relationship, how she constantly told him that I told her to not be with him and all this other stuff, which could not be further from the truth because I'm a person who don't care what nobody else does. This your business. But for him to come back around and kind of confirm for me what I was already thinking about her, I enjoyed that. I really appreciated that because one thing God will do is reveal your enemies. Okay? So again, if you have a friend that is competing with you for anything, especially a man, it's a no. The other night, I actually met two African girls who were with an African guy, right? Now, the African guy was clearly more interested in one friend than the other, but the friend he was not interested in kept trying to talk to him, kept trying to engage with him when he was clearly interested in the other girl. And uh, all of a sudden, the girl asked him, because the guy seemed mad annoyed by the questions that the girl he didn't like was asking him. And all of a sudden, she asked him, like, are you feeling my friend? And he was like, your friend is mad pretty. And she was like, well, you know, everybody's pretty. Like, there's pretty girls all the time, but it has to be more than pretty. And when I heard that, I'm like, I would never talk to this girl again. Because why, why would you say something like that in response to somebody telling you that I'm pretty? It doesn't make any sense. But that was an example for me of somebody competing. And I see that all the time in my relationships. Like girls compete for a man that I can never, I can never do nothing like that. So watch out for those friends who are competing with you, especially when it comes to a man. But in general, a fake friend will compete with you, but a real friend will allow you to run your own race because they're running theirs. Okay, let's go ahead and go into the number six sign. So the number six sign that we have that you have a fake friend is going to be comparison. We all know comparison is the thief of joy. You compare yourself to another person is what takes all your joy because it keeps you from seeing the beauty and the things that you have to be grateful for in your life, right? So um, if you have a friend that is constantly comparing themselves to you when you guys are totally different anyway, everybody's their own individual person. Human beings are so complex. So unless you're twins, you literally cannot be like another person, right? It's impossible. Everything you do will be different. So let me get into the story time about comparison. Now, as you guys know, I'm in a relationship and um, I told a friend this back around my birthday. Now, I haven't shared this really with anybody besides, you know, you guys on here, y'all my people. Um, but I told her a few things about the guy. Most specifically, I told her about his height, which he he's a little shorter than me. And I also told her about, um, <clears throat> which I also told her about uh, his occupation. And uh, these are two things that she really, really harped on during the conversation. So when she gave me a call back a few weeks ago, she tried to tell me how she had met a guy and had, we were in similar situations. So I'm like, how so? She said, well, this guy is short as well. So I'm like, okay, like, how short is he? She says 5'9". Now, I'm 5'8", right? And my this, this friend that I'm talking about is around five feet. So when she said this, I said to her, girl, for real, what's the real reason you called me? Because you're not even five foot, I don't think. So why is it a problem to date a guy that's five nine? He's taller than you. She was like, no, that's really the reason I called you because my family complains about me being short all the time. So I don't want them to get on him as well. I said, five nine is tall for a man. So I'm, I'm confused. Like, wait, I don't get it. She was like, well, I knew you were you were currently dating someone shorter. So I just thought you had some advice for me on how to handle the situation and how to handle people that are going to talk about the height difference. I said, girl, what height difference? Y'all, 
y'all are, are perfect almost for each other he's taller than you that's what society likes a man that's taller than a woman so I, i'm confused like wh what do you call me for why are you comparing your situation to mine she's like well let me tell you this he makes this amount of money right and she tells me the strategic way she used to find out how much money he makes and i'll talk about this a little more in the, in the other video and i just could not understand why she's competing with little old me because i'm big me <laughs> But I'm like, why are you comparing yourself to me? Why Why does it matter? I live in Houston. You live in Charlotte. I'm tall. You short. We literally can't be compared. I'm dark skinned. You're on the lighter side of things. And she gets she gets into an argument. And she gets into an argument with me over over colorism and tries to tell me I'm a colorist because I don't I don't like light skinned people. But I date a light skinned man. So it's just it's it's it's. The conversation, I'm just like, the whole time she's talking to me, I'm like, I'm never going to talk to this girl again. But comparison is a thief of joy. The reason she can't see what she has in front of her with the guy that she's seeing who hasn't asked her to be his girlfriend, who has not asked her for any type of commitment, who is not looking probably to commit to her, who is just literally conversing with her because that's what men do out here. They just converse. When they're single, they just converse with other women. Um, So... I can't understand why she would want to compare her situation to what I have going on when they're totally different. They're totally different, but it hit me like a ton of bricks. She's a fake friend, right? A friend would never compare themselves to you because they know that y'all can't be compared. Y'all are two different individuals that have met together on a soul level to be friends, to share each other's company, to share each other's accolades accomplishments experiences that is not there to compare themselves to you in a race that you guys aren't even running together we're on totally different paths and um it really hurt me because i actually known this girl for years since we were like in middle school so to find her compare herself to me when you can't compare yourself to me i'm totally different from everybody bro i don't i'm not materialistic i don't care how i show up in the world to anybody but god I am not trying to impress anybody. Any move I make is strictly for me. So you can't compare yourself to me when you live the totally opposite way than I live, right? So, so it's one thing if you want to call me and brag about the guy that you're dating. That's awesome. But to call me and tell me that you want my advice because I'm in a similar situation than you, like, it's, it's totally different. Like, it... it baffled me and she has a degree super smart girl so i knew she was doing this because she was a fake friend so make sure you watch out for those people who constantly compare their se themselves to you y'all are different you are different from everybody you are one of a kind period i'm one of a kind i cannot be compared to anybody because i'm incomparable right i'm irreplaceable there is nobody like me literally i look around i look at, i look everywhere i can't find nobody like me any man i've ever dated they look around they can't find anybody like me. I can literally pull up my phone right now and look at messages from guys who I've dated and who constantly just keep coming back. I've been ignoring these men for months and they still coming back. Why? Because I'm one of a kind and I know this. So watch out for those friends who compare themselves to you because they know you one of a kind too. And they trying to discredit you. They trying to let you know that you ain't that when you really are. Okay. And them comparing themselves to you just tell you that you really that. Okay. Because. Who else? I mean, why would they compare themselves to you if you wasn't that? You feel what I'm saying? So be around people who won't compare themselves to you who also know that they that. Okay, period. Now, this is going to lead me into the next sign. A friend who throws shade. So shade can come in, a, in many forms. It can come in forms of backhanded compliments. That is going to be the biggest one, right? Now, I'm going to tell you guys a story about a friend I had who was notorious for this. And I kept giving her chance after chance. But eventually, I just can't. I can't do it. It's like, yo, you so fake. The hate so real. I can't take it. I can't take it from you no more. Now, when I first met this girl, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really tell you guys a secret. like, And don't judge me for this. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys a secret. Now, this particular girl, I had met her at a house party um in my city this is when house parties was going on or whatever like that and during this house party like uh i found out that both of her parents had passed away and uh you know it kind of like made me feel a little bit for her she told me how she doesn't have any friends anymore nobody supported her during her parents loss and stuff like that so i'm like y'all feel for you you know so you know she asked if we can hang out and i'm like oh of course we can hang out like what's what could what's the worst that could happen right and um 
what a mistake I made. Um, I'm not gonna lie, them fake friends, you had the most fun with them. I'm not gonna lie. Cause they be fake, you know what I'm saying? So you know, fake people turn up the party. But uh, the first time I hung out with her, uh, there was a guy that had tried to get at me. And in order to stop the guy from pursuing me, she tells the guy that I'm her girlfriend, right? Which was, I'm like, okay, I didn't know you roll like that. But one thing about women, one thing about women, Nine out of ten women that approach you to be your friend want to eat your eat your box. I'm not I'm not even gonna hold y'all. I'm not even gonna hide it from y'all. They want to eat that thing. So I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I let her start eating my. Ah, it's a secret. It's a secret. Okay, don't tell nobody. So I think that bred a little bit more jealousy from her. That that bred more fakeness from her because we wasn't telling anybody that she was doing it to me, right? Now, this is when I realized she was actually fake and I had actually gained a foe instead of a friend. Now, um, I have several examples from her, but this one in particular where she was throwing backhanded compliments is when um, she would also she would always give me a call. She has a lot of friends, a lot of male friends. Let me say this. So she gave me a call one night telling me like, hey, this guy wants to meet you. He's a YouTuber, right? And I'm like, well, you know, let me see him. And she showed me him. I'm like, oh, he's cute. Like, okay, what's up? He like, yeah, come on over. Like, I'm cooking tonight. Like, we got the hookah. We got drinks and stuff like that. Like, come over. I live downtown. Like, pull up or whatever. So I'm like, cool, let's pull up. And I bring, I bring my fake friend from the first example I gave y'all who dated a guy who tried to get at me first. So um, I bring her and uh, we hanging out with the dudes and uh, do you know like they're both active funny because they're interested in the YouTuber, right? But the YouTuber is, is interested in me and I don't got to try hard. Y'all feel the vibes of the camera. I ain't got to do too much. I'm real chill or whatever. And um, the friend tells the guy, the YouTuber that, you know, that we mess around. So when she says that to him, I'm like, why are you telling people that? That's like... It's a, it's a secret and then you're not telling the specifics tell him that you eat my box don't just say we mess around you need to tell him details right so uh she's like oh, i don't mean nothing by it but i could tell she meant something by it right so i let it slide that night we went over there a few nights later for taco tuesday right when we went over for taco tuesday y'all y'all see i got a tattoo of a swallow on my chest which is a bird right and uh i've had this tattoo i want to say i don't know for a long time um and during this during this interaction when she came over she said uh girl what type of tattoo is that is that what is that a scorpion so when she said it was a scorpion i'm like yo why are you trying to be cute she said what you mean i said why are you trying to be cute like you know what it is so why are you trying to be cute she's like i'm not trying to be cute she's like, i'm just asking i'm being for real like does this look like a scorpion can y'all see like girl don't play in my face does this look like a scorpion so i'm like I'm like, it's a bird. Like, I said, you like this dude right here? She's like, what are you talking about? I said, do you like him? Because if, if you like him, all you got to do is tell me that you like him. And he's like, he's like, whoa! I can't believe you just asked her that. But do you know, after their initial, um, the, the initial meeting that we all had together, he had told me I need to watch out for. He said, that's not your friend. And when a guy tells you that, he's telling you for a reason. Because he heard something that you didn't hear. So uh, I asked her, I said, hey, you like the guy? She was like, no, I don't like him. I said, then why are you trying to be funny in front of him? Like, you know what I got on my chest. You know it's a bird. You being mad funny. Like, I don't like that or whatever like that. So me and her get like get into a little back and forth where I'm trying to tell her, like, girl, be secure in yourself. You don't got to tear me down in front of a guy to be funny, right? Like, it's not funny. I, I don't think it's cute. Like, it's not funny to me. You're trying to make people laugh. Like, if you want to make somebody laugh, create a joke. But don't make me the butt of your joke. And you're supposed to be my friend. You get what I'm saying? So... Uh, she ended up leaving and you know when you bother somebody when you really triggered them when they leave because she was wrong so she left or whatever and uh a few nights later i had a party at my house for juneteenth and uh she came late mad drunk and uh um during this interaction she starts popping and i had a nice crib at the time i had a house and this is really like this is really one of my first times like really gathering people at my home i had had a party before that but i hadn't had any furniture so i had had my home furnished and she comes in popping firecrackers in my home so when she did it i'm like but she also throwing shade again like she also like talking mess about my home you know what i'm saying when i my home is mad cute i'm not gonna lie to you i can't even front i'm mad cute you don't gotta do all that right like be happy for me if you're my friend now one other interaction this this interaction made me look at her totally different like after this like i was like i gotta take a step back from her um i go out to a club with her and then the fake friend from example number two um the friend that would compare herself to me 
and um we all go out together and that friend drives and i'm in the passenger seat and the friend i'm talking about right now is in the back seat and uh during this interaction uh there was a guy outside we were leaving the club together and there was a guy outside who i thought was cute so i let down the window i'm like damn you look good today and he was like well thank you and he started trying to talk to me right and i get out the car I, like model my outfit and the girl yells from the back seat like oh we mess around again like why are you telling people that we don't even do it anymore like that that thing i had stopped doing it after the interaction with the with the youtuber so uh, when she said it again, like, I'm like, girl, what is wrong with you? Like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? She she start, she start like talking. She gave backhanded compliments about the shoes I had on, which I had on some Balenciaga. It's like, girl, come on. Like, you wearing Nike. So, and, and no disrespect to Nike. I love Nike. But why are you trying in my outfit when you didn't even try today? You like, like minimum effort. Like, <laughs> Like, come on, just say I look nice and let's keep it moving. But you got to watch out for those friends who throw shade at you in front of other people. So her telling them that I do that with her, like, it was none of his business. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to make me look a certain way and try to give him an idea about me. And she was mad belligerent the whole time. Like, he, she she literally almost ran the guy off, like, because I went out with him the next day. And he was telling me, you know, I really didn't like the energy that was coming from your friend. That's your friend? That's the type of girl you hang out with? I said, nah, we're not going to really hang out too much more. You know what's funny the meeting that i had with the guy like we had met at um this uh little lounge spot um the next day and i went to meet the friend at first right and when i went to meet her the guy was like you know where you at i'll pull up on you and he pulls up with his sister and uh i just walked over to the bar to talk to him for a little bit and do you know my friend leaves me she leaves me at the club by myself and uh he was like oh let's go to stats uh meet with him and his sister like you could ride with us i'm like I, I got I actually came with my friend, so I'm a I'ma ride with her and see if she wanna go. And then his sister says, Girl, that ain't your friend. She left like 20 minutes ago. I said, No, she didn't, because she wouldn't do that. Like she wouldn't leave me. And she was like, Yes, she did. So I literally I go looking for her, I can't find her. I call her, I said, Girl, where you at? She's like, Oh girl, I had to leave, whatever. Like you don't say anything to me, but you call yourself my friend. That's mad weird. But again, people will hate on you for nothing. All you do is show up as yourself and they cannot stand that when people give you attention that they wish that they could get from a person. So be mindful of those friends who throw backhanded compliments, who throw shade at you in front of others, especially a man or the opposite sex when y'all are trying to get to know somebody. Red flag all day. It's a fake friend. Now let's go ahead and hop into the number four sign. The fourth sign that it's a fake friend is going to be lack of support. Now lack of support can come many ways where there is a friend not coming to you when you open a business, right? Um, or a friend downplaying your accomplishments or trying to make you think that you are not who you think you are, right? And, uh, you know, we all are a little bit delusional or we have to be to get to where we want to go, right? In order for me to become a YouTuber, I have to get on YouTube and make videos. That's the only way I can say I'm a YouTuber, right? In order for me to have been a rapper, I had to go to the studio, make songs, and then drop music in order to become a rapper. In order to become a hairstylist, I had to do hair and get clients and get business and have people refer me in order to say that I'm a hairstylist, right? I had to um, sell, I had to buy inventory and actually sell bathing suits and sell clothes in order to say that I had a boutique. So you cannot fake these things, right? The evidence or proof, let me say, is in the pudding, right? So if you have a friend, you open the business and this, this person don't come to you to get their hair done. This person don't come to you to get no clothes, no shoes or nothing. And I know a lot of people in the comments going to be like, oh, maybe they don't like your stuff. That's okay. Yeah, it's cool to not like yourself, but let me give y'all an example. I had a homegirl who I didn't like any of the clothes that she was selling, but you know what I did? I still showed up and bought clothes from her. And that's actually the example I'm going to use for our story time today. So I had um, my homegirl sister, and I know these girls since I was young. My homegirl sister started selling clothes, and I'm buying the clothes, right? Um, and the clothes, I, I still haven't worn anything but one outfit to these days, but I probably bought like four outfits from her. Um, but clothes did not fit me well at all. They were cheap. Like I didn't like it, but I just wanted to support her business and let her know, like, I see what you're doing and I know how it is to try to open up something or try to start a business and not have anybody support you right away. That's in your circle. So I wanted to show up for her and I didn't have to do that. I'm a single mom. You get what I'm saying? I didn't have to spend my money on that. But um, I would buy the clothes and then repost her stuff. I wouldn't wear the clothes. Like I said, I didn't really like the outfits. Um, but uh, I would repost it for her. And then one day in particular, um, one day in particular, we were like on a boat one time. And um, 
we were talking about her business she was talking about how she was going to pay jada waiter this large amount of money to to um to uh promote her products and promote her clothes so she can get more business so i'm like girl you don't gotta pay her she and and jada waiter i think at the time wanted like thirty five hundred dollars um and uh corinne had wanted like twenty five hundred and uh I was like, girl, you don't got to pay them. Like, we in the city anyway. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll post your stuff every day. Like, it don't matter. Like, I'll wear, I'll wear your stuff. Like, I'll model for you because I have a nice body as opposed to these women, right? These women who are who are around you. Hell, even, even the, the boutique owner. I have I have the better body out of anybody. You, you put me beside anybody, anybody. Line them up. Put me beside your best body and I'm winning every time, right? So, I offered to even model clothes for her because I, I didn't like or didn't think the photo shoots for her clothing were like cute or you know attractive to a potential customer i think she could have had somebody in a better body that's what fashion over does they have people in they have the women with the bbls and stuff model their clothes because they consider their bodies perfect now i don't have no bbl or nothing but i in terms of natural i have the best body and i'm gonna stand on it every day every single day you know what i'm saying so she was like, um, oh, no, that's good. I'm, I'm good, Jenny. No, thank you. I said, well, why not? She said, I don't think you can attract any business. <laughs> I said, okay, no problem. Now, I had a successful bather suit company, bather suit line, drink swimwear. So, for her to say I couldn't attract any business, it was like a slap in the face to my accomplishments because it's like, not only did I have everybody in the city wearing my stuff, I inspired you to do what you're doing. You get what I'm saying? So I really did not like that, but it tells you that that was a fake friend. I'm going to give you another example of her being fake a little later on in this video, but I really did not like that. You have friends who want you to do their hair for free, right? Instead of paying you to do their hair, but they'll go pay another girl, right? So I'm just like, when you could, you could come support me, right? If you're my friend, support me because you would want me to support you. And in that same breath, um, her sister, her sister had started um, a hair business and she wanted me to model the hair for her, but she wanted me to buy the hair to model it for her. Girl, I don't need any bundles. And if you know me, you know, I'm really not a person who like to wear a lot of weave anymore. Like I'm really a person that like to keep it real natural, real cute because I'm going for the whole black girl look. That's what I'm looking for, black, period. I want to look black and natural. And uh she got upset because I told her I wanted the stuff for free. And she called me a bad friend for that. I'm a bad friend, but what are you talking about? But when I do hair, you don't even come to me to pay me. When I sell clothes, when I sell bathing suits or anything, you don't come support me. What are you talking about? I'm a bad friend, but that's what I'm talking about. People will discredit who you are when it doesn't benefit them. And as you guys know, I have this YouTube channel, right? Um... I want to say maybe I have one or two friends who have reposted the videos for my YouTube channel. Shout out Crawford. Shout out Ty. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't have, and I got, and I have many friends, right? A lot of people that would consider themselves a friend to me. A lot of people who DM me, friend this, friend that. A lot of people who text me, friend this, friend that. But people won't even repost your content, right? Because they don't want anybody else to discover who you are. They want anybody else to know about you is the reason they, they don't support any of your businesses. They don't want you to become bigger than them or what they think they are. And it's sad because there's enough room out here for everybody, especially a friend. I had a friend um, in terms of my YouTube videos who said she wouldn't take relationship advice from me, but she knows I'm on here giving relationship advice. But she's single. But she called me the other day. Didn't I tell you I used her in the, in the second example? But you call me asking for my advice because you're dating somebody shorter. How the tables have turned. You get what I'm saying? So, like I said, you got to watch out for that lack of support. That is a huge sign of a fake friend. And we're going to go ahead and move into sign number three. We're almost at number one, y'all. So make sure you stick with me to the end of the video, okay? Now, number three sign that you have a fake friend is that they're not invested in the relationship, right? You ever had a friend, they don't show up for none of your parties, none of your birthday parties, none of your celebration, none of your child's events, nothing big in your life. They don't show up. The only time they show up with you is to do things that are destroying your life, that are destroying your vessel. They'll show up to you to pop a bottle. They'll show up with you when you got a section in the club. They'll show up with you when you got a blunt, when you got some money to spend, something like that. But they won't show up with you. They won't show up for you when it really matters most, right? 
I had a homegirl who she could call and ask me for money anytime. Anytime. Now, in turn, when I needed some money, right? She didn't show up for me. She acted like she was and she totally disappeared, which is fine. That is completely fine because I still got it done regardless. I just wanted to see. And let me say this. I didn't call her and ask for help. I called to vent to her and she offered help, which is even bigger, right? Because if I don't ask you for nothing and you offer and you choose not to come through with the offer that you made, it makes you fake. I don't care what nobody say. Period, point blank. It makes you fake. And it takes a bigger person to say, hey, I offer help and I can't do it. And I'm sorry that I offered you that help, but I can't do it. That takes a huge person, but people don't do that, right? People will play in your face and act like they're going to help you and have you holding on to that hope and never come through for you. So that is a sign of somebody not being invested in a relationship. When you need them, they don't come through, right? My sister did the same thing that same, in that same instance, actually. My sister, I was venting to her about the same situation. She offered help and didn't come through for me. And I don't talk to her either. And it's not about the help. I could care less about the help. It's about the communication, right? You acting like you're going to help and not coming through. It's worse than a man acting like he going to help and not coming through. You get what I'm saying? It's totally fake and it's manipulation. It is a manipulation tactic to keep you on their side, to keep you in their life, which is what a fake person does. They manipulate you in the, in the staying around. They manipulate you in the staying in their life. And uh, another sign that they're not invested in a relationship is like, uh, say you got a child, right? They don't even know how old your kid is, right? They don't know when their birthday is. They don't know how old they are. They don't know anything about your kid. They don't know anything about you, right? They don't know what you got going on, where you work, what you do for a living. Like, that's sad, right? Like, you're my friend. You don't even know what I do for a living. You don't even know what my career path is. All you know is what time we show up to the club. You get what I'm saying? When I stopped going to the club, I stopped seeing a lot of people. They were no longer invested in the relationship because I could not offer them the club purse that I was able to offer them before. I couldn't offer them us the ability to get into a section us the ability to get free drinks from guys that we we don't even know you know i i wasn't able to offer them that anymore so they stopped they stopped messing with me which is completely fine because god is good right when you stop doing what you're not supposed to do you will get rid of the people that you're not supposed to have around you and that's period but you got to watch out for those people who don't know what you got going on and don't even care what you have going on unless it benefits them okay now i'm gonna go ahead and go into the number two sign Number two sign that you have a fake friend is going to be, I know I'm skipping numbers, I got to be. <laughs> I'm just going to start saying next sign because I know I skipped a number. The, <laughs> I think I skipped five, I can't remember. But uh, the next sign that a person is a fake friend is going to be imitation, y'all. And some people love when people copy them, but I'm the total opposite. I do not like that at all. I'm all about originality, okay? And I understand being an influencer. I totally get that. I want to influence your character, but influence your look. Nah, I don't really, I'm not really interested in that. Because there's a way to take inspiration from somebody and not copy them. And I'm a firm believer in that. I told you guys in a previous video how I had a roommate who would literally go buy the same things that I would buy. And where it was weird to me. Go, you know, get the same hairstyle that I'm wearing at the time. It was super weird to me. And would copy my mannerism, copy what I'm saying. It was so weird to me. And I just could not understand why this person wanted to do that. And it's because they're fake. They're trying to literally assume your identity and become you. And totally wipe you off the map. That's what people do. And uh, I have another example of this. Because I met another person like her um, a few years ago. Uh, the last job that I had actually... One of the last jobs that I had in Charlotte, I had met a girl who actually made me quit a job, actually, because she was so up my ass. And God forgive me for, for cursing. But, um, yeah, I would say, say I walk in and wear something one day. The next day, she'll have something similar. Say I wear a pair of shoes, she'll try to go get the same pair of shoes. Down to glasses, y'all. I wear a pair of glasses. And I told her, like, I walk out them off Amazon. Like, they're not even real. She, like, send me the link. I'm like, send you the link? Why? <laughs> Why? If you, if you want to wear glasses, just go on Amazon and search for, for your own. Like, needing the link is insane to me. But they say that imitation is the highest form of flattery, and it's not. It's actually pretty creepy, right? Somebody that wants to assume your identity when God has provided them with their own, they cannot be trusted. I'm telling you right now. So that is going to be a huge sign that you got a fake friend around you. Imitation is not the highest form of flattery. Flattery is the highest form of flattery. 
congratulate me, compliment me. And some people, they'll watch what you do. And I think that was the issue with my roommate, right? They'll watch what you do and never send you a compliment, never compliment anything that you're doing. They'll just go copy. And I got a lot of people like that that I've, I've encountered in life, especially from the city that I'm from. Like, they'll always watch what you do. But they'll never compliment you or congratulate you on it. All they're going to do is re is try to reinvent what you're doing. Try to reiterate. Try to copy it. Try to imitate it. And give it out to the world. And the world won't receive anything they're doing. And they can't imagine why. Because you copied me. Because that was for me. God gave that idea to me. And you tried to steal it. And it didn't work for you because it, it wasn't your idea. So pay attention to those friends, okay? Now, we're almost down to the wire, y'all. Number two sign that you got a fake friend is going to be a friend that cannot hold water oh my god that is the fakest thing that somebody can do not be able to hold your water it makes you scared to even tell a person any of your business me i don't tell nobody my business except my man nobody knows my business if i tell you something it's because i already put it out to the world so i'm okay with it being repeated because that's the only time you should tell somebody something y'all if you're okay with getting your business repeated tell somebody right but if you're not okay with it you got to find you a loyal friend who would never repeat your business no matter jesus couldn't even get that information out of them okay that's the type of person i like around me period point blank okay but now nah, in all in all seriousness vent the guy <laughs> but um a friend that repeats your business is a friend that can't be trusted period point blank because if they'll tell your business they'll tell anything They'll tell anything, any situation, they'll tell anything. And it's all for attention and it's all to paint you in a certain light because at the end of the day, you will never notice, but people always view you in a high light when you're the chosen one, period. People view me in a great way. People view me in a great light because I have shown up as myself since day one, right? Period, point blank. Regardless of whether I got it or I don't got it, I'm showing up as me, period. You'll never be able to tell the difference. So when people try to use your information that you give them to give it to other people to taint your image, it's a fake friend. I'm going to use an example of um, one time I was in the tarot cards and I told you guys this in a previous video. I'll make sure I link it. One time I was in the tarot cards and I told my, my homegirl um, and this is actually the same sisters. These are the same sisters from a previous example that I gave you guys. So make sure you pay attention because I got multiple examples for multiple people. But I had told his friend about uh, the tarot readings that I was doing. And um, she was like, um, okay, I'm going to check him out. I had sent her some for her for her Zodiac sign. And she's like, okay, I'll check him out. And um, a few weeks later, like when everything happened and I decided that I wasn't going to get into tarot and stuff, I wasn't going to watch stuff like that. When God gave me the sign to not do it no more, I went and called her because I made sure if I told anybody that, I went right back and, and corrected my mistake because I don't want to influence anybody to do anything. Period, point blank. If it's not a God, I don't want to influence nobody to do it. So um, I went back to her. I went to her house and I told her, I said, I said hey, you still watching those tarot readings? She's like, yeah, I do it. And tell, she tells me that she watches them, right? So I was like, well, girl, I'm not watching them anymore. I got a sign from God that it's just not something that we should be doing. So, you know, like, um, I would suggest you don't do the same. Well, you need to stop watching them too. She's like, okay, I'll stop. I'm not, I'm not into it as much anyway, but she's like, I'll stop watching them. I have been checking them out though. So I'm like, okay, so maybe like a week later, we go to, um, we go to a club for another friend's birthday party, right? And I'm riding with her and her sister who had just got a new car she wanted us to ride with. And I ain't no hater, so you know, I'm, I'm gonna pull up with y'all in the bins, right? And uh, on the way back home, or on the way back, yeah, on the way back home from the club that we went to, um, her friend was like, Janine, you can go ahead and get on the ox. But at the time, I was purging uh, secular music, right? So all I had on my playlist was gospel. So when the gospel came on, it was like, okay, Janine, you can let that ride or whatever. Um, but it was like, we don't really do the new age gospel music, right? We, we into the old school stuff. So I was like, well, y'all need to get on the new stuff because the new stuff sounds like the secular music that you're listening to, but it has positive lyrics. It has lyrics that are going to tell you to do the right thing as opposed to influence you to do the wrong thing, right? And um, they were like, oh, Janique, I, and her sister says this to me, Janique, I love your walk with God now, man. I'm so glad because I was a little worried when when she said her sister's name had told me that you got into tarot readings. I was like, oh, that's that's some witchcraft and all this other stuff, right? She started going in. And I was just quiet and taking it back because I could not believe that she shared something like that so personal with her with her sibling. Now, okay, I know a lot of people going to be in the comments like, oh, but it's her sibling. I don't care. Who, I don't care if it's your man. If, I, if you're my friend, 
And I tell you something, I expect that to be between us because this is our relationship. When you bring other people in, it's it, it loses its value. You get what I'm saying? It makes me not want to tell you anything. So yeah, I got super upset that night. I didn't say anything to her about it, but it made me look at her a little differently. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to keep my eyes on you, man. Because if you are my real friend, as she was for many years, she never repeated any of the information that I told her. So I thought. But it made me understand, like, maybe she do be repeating my information, actually. Her sister had tried to tell me one time before, like, oh, uh, Janine, she had asked me a question. She was like, I said, I'm sure your sister told you already. She's like, no, my sister don't tell me nothing about you. But I realized it was fake. So, you know, it was a fake friend that day. And uh, I just, and, and, and maybe some people are okay with people repeating their information, but not me. You know what I'm saying? It's something I have released to the world now because other people know now. So I don't mind telling the, the world that I, I was watching tarot readings. But, you know, at the time, like, it really rubbed me the wrong way because I was going through my spiritual journey and I was so deeply rooted in my walk with God that, you know, okay, when you're on the search for your spirituality, when you're on the search for God, it can lead you down many avenues, right? It's not up to one person to, to, to choose a narrative for you. So for her to tell her one part of it, right, but not tell her anything else, like me getting baptized or nothing like that, I didn't like that, so... I had to let her go as a friend. But it's so big to have people around you that you can confide in. Because if you can't confide in a the person, they're going to always tell somebody else the information. Again, the relationship can hold no value. You won't be able to trust them. And uh, it just, honestly, it, it makes you lose respect for a person. Because anybody will want you to keep their secret. But in order to have somebody keep your secret, you got to keep theirs as well. And I need people to understand that. So that's a sign of a true friend. Somebody that can keep your secret. And a fake friend would never. Cause they don't care enough about you to to keep your secrets. They don't they don't see the value in that relationship. There's no there's no bond between y'all, so they don't really care. So you gotta watch out for people like that. And this is gonna bring me to the number one sign of a fake friend. That's gonna be somebody who doesn't have your back. Period. If you don't got my back, you are no friend of mine. Period. Point blank. If I can't trust you in a room with my enemies to not engage in the conversation with my enemies and stuff like that, or to have my back or to take up for me, you are no friend of mine. And this is going to bring me to my next example, which is the same sisters, right? Um, one time in particular, I had went out with my friend, the friend, for her birthday, right? And her plans weren't going as planned. And uh, I had made a suggestion. I said, "Hey, we can go to this club up here. Like, we can we can all pitch in and set, like you know, and pay separately, and we can get a table together. And it'll come about. We get food and stuff like that. And we'll be able to have a good time for the night and whatever. Because I know your plans fell through. Because she was crying, right? And uh, she was like, I don't know if everybody else gonna want to do it, right? And uh, we try to go up to the door and do it, and people didn't want to pay. And that that says a lot about somebody, right? Who won't pay to enjoy." time with you on your birthday people are so weird that want you to pay for everything on your birthday i shouldn't have to it's my birthday you were supposed to be treating me right so watch out for people like that right so her friends and, and this is crazy her friends didn't want to pay she had had a lot of girls there and they didn't want to pay to get into this club to share this experience with her which is fine so she was like oh i'm just gonna um <clears throat> she's like, i'm gonna go back to the car we went back to the car we sat together i had drove her that night and we sat together and I, I'm watching her cry and I, and I gave her uh, another suggestion, right? And her sister calls her on the phone and her sister says, hey, we, we just decided. Her sister decided for her. We're going to go back to your house and order pizza. You wouldn't want nobody to do that on your birthday, but on her birthday, you're going to go order pizza at her house. Okay, whatever. And um, she was like, well, you know, Janique was saying we could do this, this and that. She was like crying right crying she was like i don't give a f what janique say like why are you even crying what you what you scared that janique is not gonna come back and eat pizza like that's what you care about who give a f about janique nobody give a f about janique i mean going in and i'm i'm sitting there right phone on speaker i'm sitting there and i'm like waiting for my friend to jump in and have my back i don't care that it's your sibling because i'll never let my sibling disrespect nobody and i'm gonna tell y'all a story about that right after this but <clears throat> she didn't even jump in for me. And when she didn't jump in for me, I had to jump in for myself because, you know, when I got to have my own back, it just tells me you're not my friend. So I jumped in and I said, you know, I jumped in. I said, who the F are you talking to? Who the F are you talking about? She's like, she called her sister name. She's like, who is that talking? And I said, it's the girl you're talking about right now. The girl you going in on. She's like, oh, Jenny, girl, I didn't even know you was there, girl. I'm just playing. No, you wasn't. You was serious, but it. Because my friend did not take up for me, it just tells me in my head, like, dang, how many instances does this happen? 
How many times has this girl came from my neck in, in your presence and you ain't say nothing? And we've been friends since we were kids, right? So <clears throat> that day I decided I was done with them. I was done with them. I went over to their house. I dropped because I had to drop her off, of course, but I had had a guy um, tell me that he wanted me to come to Honest. Was it a big strip club in Honest? I mean, a big strip club in Charlotte. Uh, he told me to come. Um, he was going to take care of me. And I had invited her. I said, man, you could come to Onyx with me or whatever like that. Like, we could do this, this, and that. Like, he going to take care of everything. We'll be able to eat. Like, we'll do whatever. We'll have a great time. She was like, well, everybody's going back to my house, so I don't want to leave them hanging. So I was like, that's fine. I, I still offer that. This is how I tell you how loyal I am. But I, I go to her house. I drop her off. I walk in. I say hi and bye to everybody. They're like, you think you're not going to stay? I'm like, no, I'm not going to stay. Now, her sister knew the real reason I wasn't staying. But, you know, she'll never admit it. So I left. And then, like, um... I just started moving away from that, that friend group and you know they had tried to invite me on a trip after that but why would I go on a trip with somebody who would talk talk like that about me when they think I'm not present absolutely not so you have to watch out for people like that man you definitely gotta watch out for people like that I was gonna give you guys another story about um friendship right because I think friends are so important sometimes friends can be closer than family and uh, I had a friend who I thought was close to their family one time. And uh, we went out with my sister and, you know, and, her, and our other friends. So it was, it was four of us and all. And my sister had some hidden animosity towards my friend. And um, <clears throat> I, I talked to my sister. I told her, like, you need to let that, that let it go because it wasn't even that serious. I was like, you need to let that go. Like, but my sister was really just jealous because I, I viewed my friend as more of a sister than her. And um she ended up getting drunk and uh, getting mad at her boyfriend. And instead of taking it out on her boyfriend, she tried to fight my friend. And she did end up punching her in the face. And uh, I felt so bad. But it made me turn, like, against my sister because you were wrong. Wrong is wrong. I don't care if we blood or not. I would never sit right here and try to attack anybody that you consider a friend because I know you value that relationship. So I value it as well. And uh, this is just how, how deep my friendship goes with a person. You know what I'm saying? Because, again... I view my friends as more than family. I don't really have any family that I'm close with, none at all. Actually, I don't have any relationships with any of my siblings. Like, And I would love for that to be a different case, but it's not. So I, any friendship I get into, I take it so seriously. I value it with my heart, and I do everything in my power to make sure that friendship stays afloat. So when these friendships fail in my life, I view it as a sign from God that they are not meant to go to the next level with me. And I want you guys to do the same. Don't be scared to lose people on your way up. Everybody can't go. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm not friends with that girl anymore that I took up for, but I'll never change what I did in that moment and take up for her when my sister was wrong. My sister was wrong. Trying to attack somebody when you inebriated because you're upset at something, when you can't really communicate. You could just communicate when you're really upset about something. Violence is not always the answer, especially when it comes to friendships. And anybody that cares about me cares about the people in my life and vice versa. So if you don't have anybody like that around you, you don't have anybody that's supporting you, you don't have anybody that is making sure that they... They keep your secrets for you, that they have your back in your absence, because it don't matter what somebody does in your face. It matters what they do behind your back. That's what's most most important. I don't care how you act in my face. How do you act when I'm not around? That's what's most important, okay? So anybody who is is not complimenting you, instead they throwing backhanded compliments and shade at you all day, that's not a person you want around you in the long run. I'm telling you, the relationship will not be sustained because God won't allow it. And I'm going to make sure I post a few scriptures about friendship in the description box so you guys can have a true idea of what a friend is, man. A friend is somebody that you can count on, somebody who won't gossip about what you got going on in your life, somebody who can keep your secrets, somebody who you can worship Christ with, somebody who respects your walk with Christ and not trying to be a hindrance to your spiritual journey. Those are the people that we want around us, somebody who uplifts us no matter what's going on, somebody who's going to support whatever we have going on. They don't care what the venture is. They don't care if they don't see the vision. You see the vision and that's all that matters. That's the person you want around you. Somebody who's going to respect the people in your life because they want to keep you around. Period. Point blank. And I want to leave you guys with one scripture I will say out loud, right? 1 Peter 4, 8 through 10. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love comes covers a multitude of sins show hospitality to one another without grumbling as each has received a gift use it to serve one another as good stewards of god's varied grace 
So we all have the gift to provide to one another in these relationships. Relationships are all about giving and receiving. It's not about being a person who takes everything from one person and doesn't give back to them. That's not a person that you want around, okay? You want somebody that is exactly like you, that has the heart that you have, and that can give the love that you give, okay? So hopefully you learned something from my message today. If you did, make sure you check out some of my other messages. And I will see you in the next video. Janique here, Janique TV. Peace.